I think our text also calls us not just to look for holy places, but to look for holy faces. Now this is harder. I think the story of Moses at the burning bush is also a story about our need, if we are to follow God faithfully, to seek the divine and the faces, the real, living, breathing people of our lives. Now it is well known that to no one did God reveal God's divine face. Not even to Moses, although he begged God to show him. Moses did finally convince God to reveal a glimpse of the divine story, but in a very humorous part of Scripture, the best description we get of what God actually showed Moses was his backside, not his face. But what I'm more intrigued by is that in the confrontation with God at the burning bush, Moses finally realized that that was God, but never really understood that God was looking the other way and saw the divine in Moses' face. Moses couldn't see God working in his own face. But when it becomes apparent that God is calling him, Moses then leads off with a whole series of excuses. How many of us have done this? As to why we're not the right person, this is not the right time, I'm not qualified to do the job. I understand in this text that God is calling us to seek the holy in the faces of those around us, even our own. Now it seems easier, at least in most churches, to simply say that you can see the holy in those who are called to the ministry. <laughs> it's so easy to see God in that face. I mean, after all, He's been divinely called, right? But there are others, and while not nearly as holy as the first face, you also say, well, because he or she has been drawn out, they are holy also. It's easy, even when we have a few flaws or foibles, uh, to look at the faces of those ordained by God or called by God. But I want you to try with me a little exercise. Now, I put together some faces of Franklin Circle Christian Church. Let me assure you first and foremost that I couldn't get everybody these are not Don Hudson's professional photographs. They're Alan Harris's cheap imitation of Don Hudson's professional photographs. Um, I'll probably disappoint you because your face is not in there, or um, uh, your face is in there, <laughs> or here, here's, here's the point. I want you to look in the eyes of each of the faces that will cross the screen, and I want you to look for the holy. Some of the faces will be easy. It's interesting, I was having a conversation this last week um, where there was a waiter that came to the table and walked away. And I said, that gentleman is quite attractive. Okay, I didn't say it like that, but I'm not gonna say in church what I did say. <laughs> that gentleman is quite attractive. My um, uh, restaurant mate looked at me and said, oh, um, he has a um, perfectly symmetrical face, that's why you think he's attractive. <laughs> I beg to differ, but for the point of my uh, sermon here, let's say, yes. Um, and, and this person went on to say, there are many, many studies, and I've actually read these studies, that um, depending on your facial features is how a lot of people will respond to you. That there is a correspondence between how close your eyes are together, or how far apart they are, how small your eyes are, the smaller your eyes, the more baby-like you look, and the, therefore the cuter you look. Um, you know, the shape of the face, whether it's round or oblong or oval, your nose is it large or smaller, uh, the, the skin tone, the skin texture, the hair color, all those kinds of things. We make those immediate decisions. Hopefully, we're responsible enough people that we say, okay, I'm going to overcome some of the, the built-in, you know, cultural stereotypes, and I'm going to see this person as a real human being. Well, what I want you to do right now is, as these faces flash across the screen, I don't want you to just see them as a legitimate human being. I want you to see these people as holy. 
If in fact we were created in God's image, in God's image He created them male and female, then there is God in each one of us. Even in the most horrific person that has ever walked the face of the earth, somewhere in there is God, because God created that person. I love, I think it's in the Buddhist tradition, um, the greeting that they have. I think it's Namaste. Am I right? In any of those? Namaste, when you bow. Namaste means, uh, may the divine in me acknowledge and recognize the divine in you. Mm. I love that. That doesn't mean we become God. No, no one's going to confuse any of us for God. Believe me, I know you all. Uh, but I want to look and see God at work in you. So just for these few moments, I want you to see if you can overcome grievances. I want you to overcome some of your uncertainties. I want you to overcome. And if you don't know a single face on here, I think you have the easier job to see God in these people because I have discovered in my own heart and mind the more I know someone the harder it is to see God in them until I finally get to that point where I give it over all to God and we work together on this so for the next few moments let's look at some things That would be a good one to get. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. If you found some of those faces easy, praise be to God. If you found some of those faces difficult, read over the Moses passage again. God was looking out of that bush in the same way Moses was looking in the bush, each trying to see the holy young face. Can we not at least to do the same. And here's where I want to end up. God is calling us in the Moses text to look for holy places even in the common, the ordinary, the plain. God is looking for us to see the holy faces even in those that we have trouble seeing the holiness in. But most especially, most importantly, God is calling us to look for holy graces. At the encounter in the desert with Moses, with God, Moses was confronted both with understanding that holy places and holy faces are everywhere. It's how we look, how we perceive, how we understand that God is at work that makes a plain place sacred or an enemy, a servant of God. But both of these holy places and holy faces are in the service to holy graces. The purpose, the purpose for which Moses was called was to lead a people out of bondage into liberation and freedom. And that mission was so important that God could not risk 
anyone being confused by pretty faces and beautiful places. God knew that the mission of liberation, redemption, freedom, hope, and love could never get tied up in arguments about monuments or personalities. A simple bush and an imperfect man met one day in the wilderness. And in the end, a nation was freed from slavery and God's will was done. So, people of God, this is our quest every day. As individuals and especially as a community. What is the holy grace God is calling you to this day? And will you risk looking beyond the pretty places, beyond the beautiful faces, so that you can discover what your holy grace is, your high calling, your mission, your purpose? What is the holy grace built on many holy graces from generations past and found in many buried and unexpected holy places and through many diverse and unusual holy faces to which God is calling this congregation? Known as Franklin Circle Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in Cleveland, Ohio in the year 2011 and following. This next year, this is the question we're going to be asking and we're going to have to be willing to see every place as holy and every face as holy if we're going to find the holy grace God has called us to. Let this be God's holy place. Let us be God's holy faces. And now, let now be God's holy grace. May it be so. Amen. As we conclude our